Hey there neighbors, I'm bald now, and I'm gonna talk about the Barbie movie. If you've been living under a rock, this is what's go been going on. Barbie movie and Oppenheimer, two very different movies released on the same day. One is about a nuclear bomb that actually happened in history and the person behind it, and the other one is a lighthearted, imaginative, frilly, pink, girly movie about womanhood and femininity and also patriarchy. You know, I'm gonna... I, I got really excited for the movie. I saw the trailer and I was like, oh my god, the cinematography is gorgeous. The set design is gorgeous. Even if I don't watch it for the story alone, I'm gonna be watching it just for the visuals. And that's where I didn't have any disappointments. The entire movie was just beautiful. Like, I wish that I could, like, just hug the people who did the prop design for this movie because it was incredible. But I also have a lot of thoughts about it. Especially being a trans person. <laughs> As someone who was like born female, had a very female upbringing, someone trying to force me into a box that I didn't necessarily fit into, I have a lot of feelings about this movie. And I know a lot of other people do too. A lot of people really enjoyed it and I thought it was a good movie overall. But the ending was where I have trouble. And that's what I want to talk about today. So if you haven't seen the movie, Definitely go watch it first. This is going to have a bit of spoilers, but just as a little bit of a recap in case it's been a minute since we went to the theater. The Barbie movie is about a dreamland of, of dolls that are all named Barbie, and all of the men are named Ken, and they just live up to their stereotypical toy expectations. So like, Ken, he's the king of the beach. He's All he knows how to do is beach. He doesn't know how to lifeguard, he knows how to beach. You know surfer's not even my job. I know. And it is not lifeguard, which is a common misconception. Very common. Yeah, because actually my job, it's just beach. Right. And what a good job you do at beach. I will say that I was expecting this movie to be a lot more family friendly than it was, but it was not. It was more so for adult audiences, and I was a little bit concerned at the amount of children that were in the theater, but that's for another video. So basically the plot is Barbie starts to feel these like human things that she's never felt before and she feels really strange about it because she's the only one who's experiencing this thing she goes over to weird barbie who's like one of those ones that got played with a little too hard and she's like listen you gotta go to the real world you gotta go and find the person that is playing with you and try and bridge that disconnect between the worlds i'm weird barbie i am in the splits i have a funky haircut and i smell like basement oh my god i had a weird barbie yeah you did you make them weird by playing too hard it reminds me of like the storylines that i come up with in my head for like my little toys for me it was littlest pet shop if anyone else loved littlest pet shop i'm right there with you they go back to the real world ken learns about patriarchy and he assumes that it's all about horses but it's mainly about men having all of the power and so he takes what he learns and realizes that like he would have a much better life in Barbie land if he wasn't being treated as like a second class citizen because he's a man. And so he goes back to Barbie land, brings his patriarchy ideas with him, doesn't even go with Barbie back to Barbie land. He loses Barbie. I don't know where she went. <laughs> This is not making any sense. But he brings back the patriarchal ideas back to Barbie land, and then all of a sudden, all of the Barbies are brainwashed. They're like, oh, I'm a bimbo now. All I know is beer and big boobies. And all of the Kens are like, hell yeah, this is what we wanted all along. And so the Barbies work together to take back Barbie land. And I like that. I like that concept as a conflict. Like, I think it, there's a lot that you can do with it. A lot that you can really introspectively think about patriarchy in the lens of a toy um, especially a toy that was made for specifically for girls like being a kid that was that was raised female every single Christmas regardless of whether they knew if I if I liked Barbie or not I still got like at least 10 Barbie dolls and they would just sit on my shelf unopened because they just saw a girl and they were like oh girls like dolls that wasn't the case with me I was much more into like animals and like playing veterinarian and stuff like that. Freaking Beyblades. How could I forget about Beyblades? I freaking love these little things. They're just little tops that battle each other, but they bring me so much joy. But it was just very infuriating. You know, that, that whole thing where it's like, oh, you are a girl? That means you must play with this toy. There was no representation of masculinity anywhere within that. I mean, sure, you had Ken. 
but Ken was literally just there to be Barbie's boyfriend. Like, he didn't have much in character development in that way. And I thought they could have done something really cool with Ken here. And I think they did. But the execution could have been a lot better. So here's what I would have changed about the Barbie movie, especially the ending. You've got all of the Barbies reclaiming control over the government. They're like, okay, we're going to reclaim our, our place in court uh, in, the, in the judicial system. We're going to make sure that our voices are heard. And then when Ken's are like, oh, can we still be on the court too? They're like, no, you can be on a smaller court that handles other things. <sighs> Ken's whole, like, understanding of himself could have been done a lot better, in my opinion, with the aid of Alan. If Alan had been given more screen time, I mean, you think about Alan. He's one, one of a kind. He's the only Alan. He fits into all of Ken's clothes, which is like, he's there. He's just one of the Kens, sort of, but like, and he fits in, but not necessarily in the same way as everybody else. If he's Ken's best buddy, why do they, why do they rarely interact? Why does Michael Sarah only get like two seconds of screen time? He was probably one of my favorite characters in the entire movie. But I really do think that if Ken had just sat down at the end of the movie and had a heart to heart with Alan, and Alan had been like, listen, my whole, my whole existence is literally just to be your friend. And I'm okay with that. That's just who I am. Like, I, I want to be your friend. But I am me. I'm Alan. And I'm okay with that. And if, if Ken had sort of like understood that from Alan's perspective, then it would make a lot more sense for him to have this change of heart at the end. Because all that I saw when it came to Ken's change of heart was he cried, which is good, men should cry, but he had a musical number where he's just talking about it. And like, while that can be good, it doesn't feel right in this movie specifically because there wasn't really any musical numbers before then. And it's like, okay, we need Ken to change, so he's just gonna sing about how he's changing. That didn't really sit right with me. I really think that they could have done more with the story when it came to Ken himself, like the singular Ken. But overall, I understand what Greta Gerwig was going for. All right, I don't want it to seem like I don't understand because I do. Patriarchy has been a, a big, aspect of human society for the longest time and it sucks because women aren't given as many opportunities as men and men are still trying to hold on to what little patriarchy that they can hold on to in the current day and age and they're still trying to exert that power but to me if the barbie's true intent was equity rather than power they would have done more for the Kens. I feel like by the end of the movie, people just straight up forgot that the Kens are homeless. They don't have their own homes, and it's just up to the Barbies to decide whether or not to let them in. I feel like, I feel like that should have been resolved. I feel like by the end of the movie, if they really wanted equity and not just power, they probably would have, I don't know, made a place for the Kens to live and it's such a an important part of the patriarchy story because this thing isn't going to go away unless men and women work together like alan is one of those people who's trying to work with the woman and like he could have been the one to talk to ken you know like patriarchy is bad there i said it it's it's <laughs> my hot take for today patriarchy is bad but that doesn't mean that we can't grow from it. There are men who want to dismantle the patriarchy. And we're not going to unless women and men work together. Unless Kens and Barbies work together. And trans people, I didn't forget about us. This movie is just mainly directed at the two, the two genders. So I made it more specific to that. But you know what I'm talking about. You understand. You get me, right? That, <laughs> that's what I got out of the ending of that. That's why I'm so frustrated, because it still left me feeling like there's a war between the sexes, or a war between the genders. Even as a trans person, that sucks. Especially as a trans person, that sucks. Because I don't want to hate the people that I came from, you know? Like, I, I was raised female, I don't hate the woman in my life. 
because they're women. Like, as soon as we start to treat men, or Kens, as, like, this self-fulfilling prophecy of, like, there's nothing that we can do to help them change, that's when we kind of lose, I think. I think that's where we lose the plot, because we do have power. We do have control. And we can make a better world for, like, everybody. Not just one gender or the other. Or a secret third thing. I think that's that's the main thing that I wanted to share with this video, is... Just how disappointing the ending was, for me at least. Also, the smallpox joke did not need to be in there. I don't know why they added that. It was not funny. I did not laugh. Please give Ken a house. Please give Ken a Mojo Dojo Casa house. He deserves it. I, if, honestly, if I had been homeless for that long, I probably would have done the same thing as all the other Kens. Because being treated like that sucks. And I, like I said, I get what Greta Gerwig was doing with that because it makes men feel like women have. But overall, we don't just want men to feel the pain that women have felt. We want them to understand and we want to grow as a collective from it. So that's why I would say change the name of Barbie Land to Dreamland. Make it gender neutral. Make it a place where everyone is welcome. Because it's your imagination. You know, that's the one place where these things are possible. That's the one place where growth and positive change, they, they just live there. <laughs> That's their home too. If we can imagine it, it can happen in real life. And if we can imagine a better world where we have equity and everyone is actually listening to each other and understanding each other and trying to work and move forward from the shitty things that have happened in the past, that is my dream. That's my dreamland. That's my Barbie dreamland, okay? So, let's go Barbie, let's go party, and give the Ken some houses. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, uh, come join our Discord, the Neighborhood of Progress. We're always trying to talk about cool things like this. We're like a big internet support group, so you're more than welcome to join in. Um, other than that, I'll see you in the next one, and have a good day. Bye!